Hi everybody, my name is Alyssa. I'm 33, currently living in Tennessee. I'm self-employed and I share my financial journey here on YouTube. And this is YNAB, You Need a Budget. And happy February, first of all. I thought it'd be fun to go over what I made in the month of January and what I spent. And then also give a little update on my 2024 financial goals. So let's just jump right into it. So for income, my first source of income was the interest that I made on my high yield savings accounts and that came out to $120.44, pretty good. And then from my normal job, this is my gross income. I have to pay taxes on this because I'm a 1099 contractor, but this was my gross pay for the month. It was a five week month for me, I get paid weekly. So I got five weekly paychecks as well as a $150 bonus in here. So pretty strong month for my paycheck income. And then my third source of income was pet sitting. And this was actually my lowest month for pet sitting for the past like six months. I think January is just kind of a slow travel month for people. So I didn't have that I didn't have any house sitting gigs. I just checked in on my neighbor's dog a few times. So all in all, I made $7,570.44. Then we'll go down to my expenses. So I basically spent almost all of what I made in retirement. <laughs> so these were contributions to my HSA, my Roth IRA, and finishing up what I could contribute to my 2023 SEP IRA. And I had a $2,000 rollover in here from December, so that's why this is so high, why I could contribute so much this month. So that was my biggest expense. My second biggest expense was paying my quarterly taxes for the fourth quarter of 2023. That was due uh, mid-January so that was a whopping four thousand dollars and then for my fun money I spent $120.80 eating out I spent $180.52 on personal care which this was just my creatine powder I restocked on two things of that um, which will last me about six months and then my protein powder from Costco was on sale and this will last me like three months. So I did spend a lot this month, but I won't have to repurchase these for a few months. And then my next category is seeing and doing. This is like an entertainment category. I only spent $15 and this was going to a vineyard with my mom and a couple of friends. And we did a little wine tasting experience and it was only 15 bucks, so good time. And then stuff and things. I bought some socks and some shorts and some shoes. I This was a high spend clothing month for me. I don't normally buy that many clothes, but I had the money set aside and I just kind of pulled the trigger on some things that I was needing. So overall, in my fun money, I spent $463.13. For gas, I just fill up once. I work from home and I don't run that many errands or anything, so I pretty much just fill up once a month or even like once every six weeks. So I just filled up once and it was $43.83. For groceries, I spent $83.33. If you're new here, I currently live with my parents and they so graciously let me eat a lot of their groceries and they get meal kit boxes that I'm allowed to eat because I make them all so that they don't have to cook dinner. So I'm very lucky in that regard that my grocery bill is very low each month. My next expense was for the gym, 15 bucks. Okay, let's talk about this. So health insurance, this is not my monthly premium. So I knew that I was gonna have to double pay on health insurance this month because I was switching plans and my old plan ended in February, but I needed my new plan to start February 1st because I signed up for a marketplace plan. So I knew that I would have to double pay for that. And I called my previous health insurance to see if I could get 
a refund for the unused days because that I was paying like mid month for that. And so I would be insured from mid month to mid month. It didn't go from the first to the last of the month. It went from mid to mid. So I called and they told me that they cannot give me a refund, unfortunately. So I did have to double pay, but unfortunately I also, <laughs> I triple paid because, <laughs> so I signed up for my new health insurance, which is this 280, and I was supposed to pay before February 1st so that I could get coverage on February 1st. So I made this payment and then I set up auto pay to pay on the 15th of every month automatically and I think what happened is since this first payment didn't settle yet as soon as I set up auto payments then they like on their end they hadn't received this payment yet and it was getting to the end of the month like the 15th had already passed so they just went ahead and charged me again so now I have a $280.80 credit on my account so i won't have to pay in february for health insurance but just really annoying that i had to pay for health insurance three times this month so very expensive month for health insurance but i luckily i had the money set aside that i could roll with that punch and then like i said i'm not gonna have to pay in february so kind of makes up for itself but yeah for medical this is my surgery bills for um i had endoscopic sinus surgery and septoplasty last year so i'm just paying off my medical bills these will be finished up in june and then my phone bill i just pay my mom for my portion of the phone bill on our family plan and then storage so my mom and i share a storage unit that's where i keep pretty much 90 percent of my belongings while i live with my parents before i move out soon this year but i pay her 77 dollars for my half of the storage but it worked out kind of weird this month because i actually paid her for part of it on the last day of december and then this was what i owed her on the first that i hadn't paid yeah i just like i ended up buying her dinner on the last day of the month and then I just counted that towards what I owe her for the storage unit, and this was what I owed her on the first, so. Then for subscriptions, I just have Hulu, Discovery Plus, and Acorns that come out on a monthly basis, so that was $30.54, and then I had one therapy appointment for $140. So all in all, for my essential living costs, I spent $1,493.64, which again was a little high for me since I had to triple pay for my health insurance. (laughs) And then I have this administrative section at the bottom here for getting reimbursed. Um, This will pretty much always be zeroed out. I mainly use it for when I go out to dinner and like I'll take the bill and then my mom or whoever I'm with will reimburse me immediately. So I just use this category for that. And then I did get a 15 cent statement credit. Um, I believe this was for my Amazon rewards card. No, it was for my Capital One. I have a bill that comes out on my Capital One, so I just get a little cash back each time I pay that bill. So that's what that is. And I don't like to count statement credits as income because it's just lowering what I owe. It's not like coming into my account as cash back or anything so that's why i categorize it down here as an inflow and then it just takes away from what i spent so all in all my net income was negative five thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars and one cent and again this is because i um had saved up obviously for my four thousand dollar tax bill and then a huge chunk was from that retirement and again two thousand of that was a rollover from the previous month so it's not like i actually overspent five five by five thousand nine hundred thirty dollars but that's just the way that it worked not every month looks like that at all <laughs> so just a very like high outflow month for me so let's jump over to my 2024 financial goals 
Okay, so here are my 2024 financial goals. So my first goal was to make $5,000 in extra income. So this is not counting my, my normal job. So my first side income was from pet sitting and that was just $50 this month. And then my interest that I made on my high yield savings account $120.44. So all in all, I made $170.44 in extra income, which is 3.41% of my goal of making $5,000 extra. So pretty lame start to the year, but next, well, this month is going to be better because I already have a house sitting gig this weekend. So I will, I already will be making more than this just from the house sitting so we still have 11 months to reach that goal but just kind of a slow start to the year and then my next goal was to make eighty-five thousand dollars in gross income so this will count the extra income that i make plus my normal paychecks so from my paychecks i made that seven thousand four hundred dollars and my extra income one seventy forty four for a total of $7,570.44, which puts me at 8.91% of my goal, which is pretty on track for this target, but this was a high paycheck month for me because I got paid five times plus got a little bonus, so it's not going to work out to being on track every month probably, <laughs> but um, like this is kind of a stretch goal for me since my gross income right now is about 76 or 77 thousand dollars actually what's kind of cool this year is it's actually a 53 paycheck year for me because there are 53 paydays for me this year that's just how like the leap year worked out is it a leap year anyway there are <laughs> um 53 paydays for me this year so i'll get an extra paycheck which is cool but um, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a stretch goal for me, so we'll see if I can hit that. So my next goal is to invest $25,000, which I, I'm i actually, I think I'm going to change this to $30,000 to make it a little bit more of a stretch because I think $25,000 at the beginning of the year, I thought this was going to be a stretch, but I've had like a really strong start this year, which you'll see. And I I think I can push myself to invest $30,000 while still maintaining my fun money spending. Like I'm not depriving myself to invest $30,000. I just was able to invest a lot more at the beginning of the year than I anticipated. So I think that 30,000 will be a good goal, but I will, I'll make that change later and probably in my next budget video. So my first investment was finishing up what I could contribute to my 2023 SEP IRA, which was $500. And then I made a 2024 Roth IRA contribution of $2,850. And then I maxed out my HSA for 2024. So that limit is $4,150. And then I did not contribute anything to my taxable brokerage because I leave this for after I've maxed out all of my tax advantage accounts first in the year. So I'll probably be contributing to my brokerage in the last part of the year. So that brings me to a total of $7,500 that I invested this month, and that puts me at 30% completed of this $25,000 goal, which is pretty stellar. And then my last goal, this is more of a tracking thing. Like I don't have 100% control over having $100,000 invested in my investment accounts because the market can take a dip at any time or grow at any time. So I, this is more of a tracking thing, but it would be cool to see my investments get to $100,000 this year. So right now my SEP IRA is at $10,880.11. My Roth IRA is at $34,726.35. My HSA, is at $8,297.24. And then my taxable brokerage, I have a couple different accounts. This is mostly in Acorns, but I also have a small public 
investing account that I have like single stocks in like Apple and Tesla, stuff like that. Not too much. It's just a couple hundred bucks in there. But um, those accounts combined are $20,989.77. And then I have some crypto. I have a couple of meme coins and then I have, this is mostly Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that ended at $10,161.61. And I invested in crypto like before I knew anything about investing and that I should probably not be putting money there, but instead put it in like tax advantaged retirement accounts. So these were, you know, mistakes that I made when I was younger, but I'm still ahead of what I invested total. I should go back and see what I've actually made. Probably a few thousand dollars. I'm just gonna let this sit here and see what it does. I, I definitely want this to be less of my overall portfolio though. So once it's at $100,000 total, which let's get to that. So my, my investment accounts are at eight, $85,055.08. So once I hit that $100,000 invested, this crypto will be, you know, 10% of my portfolio, which is more comfortable to me. I don't like how big <laughs> of a percentage this is, but, you know, mistakes were made. We learned. We're catching up in my our retirement accounts. So anyway, that puts me at 85% of my $100,000 goal. I thought maybe I would do a quick net worth update as well. So let's do that. Okay, so here is my net worth. Let's just make sure this isn't, okay. I don't include my tax savings in my net worth just because like that's not my money. That's just how I prefer to do it. Um, so my net worth is at $107,000 107, $324.42, which is up $4,782.81 from last month. So obviously I had invested $7,500, but I'm only up by this month. So obviously the markets didn't do as well as last month, but that is okay. We're in it for the long run and I was still up. So yeah. So that's my little update. I hope you guys have a great February and I will see you in my next budget with me video. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.